The big breakup is coming, but after this week, it may be closer than any of us know. This is what we learned, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Today on the show, we talk about all the drama that is happening around the NCAA and the college football playoff right now and why we may be closer to that NCAA breakup than any of us know. We also talk about Brent Stock still being hired as a football analyst and why that's important. We talk about a couple of games that might be ones to watch as trip up possibilities in Ole Miss's playoff run. And we finally might be good on baseball uniforms. We give you the lineup for the weekend as we've heard. This week we have Keith Carter coming on the show and sometime in the next couple of weeks players will start becoming on the channel as part of our relationship with the Grove Collective. I mean, if you can call it a relationship, we're friends. Um, Subscribe now so you don't miss a thing. We want to thank all of you that have subscribed over the last couple of days. It means a ton. Thank you very much. This is the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day. And a special hello to the everydayers who make the show what it is. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver who likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them out. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right. So the NCAA in the college football playoff and all of that, they're having these discussions about whether or not they're going to go to 14 teams. We've all seen that. We we even had an episode and we talked about, on a segment about why they might be doing this. And the Big Ten and the SEC at the moment, they're sitting on the same side of the table. They're pulling the rope in the same direction for the first time in 100 years. The NCAA has made it to where the Big Ten and the SEC are partners in the situation, where they're looking at themselves as being on the same side, as the paradigm of where you are shifted. The Big Ten and the SEC became the power players, and they've realized, I think, that working together, they can accomplish about whatever they want to do. So the 12-team playoff finally got pushed through after the SEC and um, Big Ten were pulling in opposite directions on that one. It finally got through. But now they're looking at ESPN is coming in with all that. They're like, pump the brakes. We want this. The SEC and the Big Ten are using almost the 12-team playoff, the 14-team playoff, something like that, and the access of these smaller and other schools as a little bit of a wedge issue, I do believe. And the reason is they're going to demand things that are so extreme it could cause problems, and we're going to see this rift go a little bit further down the road. Now, this is from Heather Denich and Pete Thamel from ESPN. Heather Denich is pretty much ironed on on the playoff committee. Anything that's happening about the playoff, I think it's her. Anything that's happening around the generality of college sports, I think it's Pete Thamel, okay? But their article on ESPN yesterday, uh, or last night, said 14 college football playoff has momentum. Okay, that's cool. I like the idea of momentum, I guess. The expected boost in off auto, qua, automatic qualification spots so soon after the start of the five AQ spots in the 12-team playoff um, that starts this season is a nod to the cut changing conference dynamics. It's also a nod to the SEC and the Big Ten um, kind of throwing their rate around, but that's that's another discussion. According to sources, the model that has earned the most discussion coming out of the college football meeting in Dallas is one that would include three automatic qualifier spots for the Big Ten and SEC, two for the Big 12 and ACC, 
and one for the group of five, which is, uh, and only has three at-large spots. All right. Now, if we're going to talk about the playoff, the Big 12 and the ACC, they only need one automatic qualifier. They, they're that single big bid league. Um, the group of five has no business being in the tournament, and you should have six auto, um, at-large berths, three Big Ten, three SEC. That, that's, that would make the most sense to me. But this isn't the reason that we're doing this. Another source summoned some cautious optimism of cohesion in the group this way. The balance in the room is how to recognize the contributions of the Big Ten and the SEC while also being fair and collaborative to the collective room. There's three major issues going forward. Access through automatic qualification, which, I, like I said, I am the person that would take 12 at-large bids and be fine. The division of money, the SEC and the Big Ten deserve more, and how the group will be governed. This is where it gets interesting, how the group will be governed. And in turn, how college sports are going to be governed. Sources caution that discussions are ongoing and fluid, and there's still work being done in these three major issues. These are where things currently stand, with sources saying things could change. Here we go says the modeling is tricky as college sports remaining moving target. This ESPN deal will run through 2031 and it'd be naive to think the conference map will look the same as it does today. One high ranking official involved in the discussions told ESPN on Wednesday that the presidents and chancellors in both the SEC and Big Ten, the presidents and chancellors in the SEC and Big Ten are having conversations about whether to continue their NCAA membership, a move that would impact and possibly derail the TV agreement. They're doing a story, okay, on the 14 team playoff. This nugget trumps anything they've talked about. It says those conversations are happening, um, a source said, and some feel pretty strongly about pulling away. I'd say very strongly. I think this is going to happen. I mean, that should have been the story. That is the soundbite. If you're going to put it in the bottom of a 14-team playoff story, you're not doing much service, which makes me think that this was a Heather Denich thing because playoff gets priority. But you have a situation to where this divorce is almost settled. Now you see why Florida State and Clemson are rushing to get out of the ACC. There are teams that are trying to get into what will be a 40-team super conference, essentially, with the Big Ten and the SEC. It'll be an AFC, NFC type system with a 14-team playoff that everybody in the known world would watch. It would. Nobody cares about Liberty going to the big game and playing Oregon. Nobody cares about that stuff. Everybody wants the best available games that you can. If you have a Big Ten and SEC playoff, 14 teams, you can go 7-7 seven and seven to where the AFC and the NFC has the playoff and the two winners play in the Super Bowl for the national championship. And yes, it would be the national championship. The others would be like the FCS championship, the D2 championship. The other one, this one would be the national championship. But these presidents and athletic directors having these conversations about whether or not they need to be governed in the NCAA is definitely something to pay attention to in the very near future. I assumed that the breakaway was coming, but it was 2025, 2035, 2040, that time frame. I might be 70 years old by the time they, there's actually a breakaway. But this and discussions happening means that if the Big 12 and the ACC do not completely play ball and say yes, if there's any pushback whatsoever from the smaller schools, other than yes, sir, can we have another? I think the SEC and the Big 10 are gone at the earliest possible convenience. I think they will remove their NCAA membership in football, at least, maybe in basketball, and definitely the revenue sports, and they just let the NCAA handle some lesser revenue models for a little bit. See how they like that. I mean, they have to govern 
1,000 schools or something like that anyway. It'd be so much easier to have a governing body in charge of 40 schools in three sports. I mean, they, that could be interesting. Basically, what is happening right now, you're seeing the equivalent potentially of what the CFA did to TV rights back in the mid-80s. And I think this will be a seismic shift that could happen in the next couple of years, potentially. I think by 2030, this could all look completely different than it does right now. And we don't know what the dynamic will be in that time frame. So it will be very important for Ole Miss to win games as soon as possible and try and bank it up to be at the top of the list. Just my opinion there as well. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks again for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. Ole Miss has made another analyst hire. And what games are you truly concerned about in the 2024 season? You can't say Georgia. You can't say Oklahoma. What games have you worried? We talk about that next. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. They have the 2024 Nissan Rogue. I own a Rogue. I love my Rogue. It is perfect for city drives and great escapes. It has class exclusive Google built in and is always you're updating your assistant so you can call on it for just about anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant's Google Map, Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midside crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. It has room for eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing, when adventure calls, Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it is also available on the Amazon Fire TV with the Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So, the NCAA and the college football playoff, we all know that that situation is a mess. And Ole Miss is doing a, honestly, a pretty good job football-wise of managing the chaos. And they're making good hire after good hire after good hire. And they just hired another analyst at Ole Miss, Brent Stockstill. He was a quarterback, played for his dad, Rick Stockstill at MTSU. The Ole Miss Rebels made another addition to their coaching staff on Wednesday as former Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders quarterback. Brent Stock still is reportedly joining Lane Kiffin's crew as an offensive analyst per football scoop. This will not be Stock Still's first rodeo with Kiffin as the former Blue Raider worked as an offensive player personnel assistant in 2020, 2019 with Florida Atlantic under Ole Miss offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss Jr., Stockstill also served as a quality control analyst under Weiss in 2020 at South Florida. So there are some relationships that have happened, and this might be a situation to where we talked about, heck, I think it was just yesterday, the, the run-pass ratio of the Ford Atlantic offense in 2017, 2018, and 2019. And Charlie Weiss bringing back an offensive analyst from 2019 for what he understands about football means that the offensive game planning, the run pass mix, stuff like that could change a little bit. I think after this hire, I feel like I'm more right than I was. And we'll see exactly how that goes. Brent Stock still is a good quarterback. He was in college. Um, his dad's a really good football coach and he's working his way up the ranks. He's about 29 years old. He's honestly about the same age as Charlie Weiss Jr. 
So we'll see if that happens with those continually um, continuing to mentor Jackson Dart, Austin Simmons, Walker Howard, those guys at the quarterback position. There's a lot of quarterbacks in that room um, that you can benefit. And Corey Dennis, as an analyst as well, has been brought in. Also, the Corey Dennis hire, we talked about him on Monday. And the offense that gave Georgia the most trouble and has given Georgia the most trouble offensively was that Ohio State offense from 2022. Yes, Georgia won the national championship. Yes, they blew out TCU. Yes, they were very lucky to beat Ohio State that day. Corey Dennis was an offensive um, assistant quarterback coach on that staff. He'll understand the concepts that gave Georgia trouble. That's just another way that analysts are going to help figure out how to beat the Georgia Bulldogs in 2024. But it's not just all about the Georgia Bulldogs, okay? We like to talk about the Georgia Bulldogs. Everybody's honestly excited about the Oklahoma Sooners coming to Oxford. And I started thinking about games on the schedule that are not necessarily trap games. They're, they're not, it's not that severe. It's games that if it got completely sideways, I could see Ole Miss struggling that game. For instance, Ole Miss goes to Fayetteville. Arkansas, record-wise, is not, not expected to be extremely good. I mean, probably six, seven-win type football team. But Ole Miss has struggled in Fayetteville, traditionally. The last time they won in Fayetteville, I think, was 2008. Absolutely nuts to think about that. That's nearly 20 years of not winning in Fayetteville. Now, if they play in Little Rock, they can win. If they play in Oxford, they can win. They struggle in Fayetteville for whatever reason. So you have the mental thing, like the curse of the Bambino or the Billy Goat or the self-fulfilling prophecies that have been allowed to build up. Well, this is one that Ole Miss is going to have to get through this season. If Ole Miss wants to go to the playoff, they have to win this football game. So even though everything seemingly is going against the Ole Miss Rebels, you have a chance to set everything right um, by winning this game. The other one is LSU. And I, LSU is, you know, that's one of the big three on Ole Miss's schedule anyway. I get that. But Ole Miss has went into Tiger Stadium 7-0 and twice in the last 10 years. They've walked out with losses both times. That rivalry is special whenever Ole Miss is good. Whenever Ole Miss settles down, drops back to the mean, whenever they're a 6-6, six 7-5 six, type football team, LSU, they just move right past them, as they honestly should. But when Ole Miss is good, and especially when you play a game in Tiger Stadium, that becomes different. Jackson Dart has been one of those 7-0 and quarterbacks playing in Tiger Stadium. Now, it was a day game. It was like a 2-30 game. And those 2-30 games don't exist anymore, by the way. The big game of the day is going to be the 7 o'clock ABC game. It's going to be a primetime game. So... You can expect a cauldron-type atmosphere similar to 2014 LSU for young people that might remember that. And Ole Miss has to figure out a way to handle it. They LSU has brought in defensive coordinators. They're supposed to be getting back to their roots, although I'll believe it when I see it. The defense last year was very, very bad, and they haven't exactly upgraded all their talent. So they might be coached a little bit better. They might be in the right positions, but they had some schematic athletic problems um, in 2023. But those two games scare me. And if you had told me a non-conference game gets my attention, okay? I don't think Ole Miss is going to lose the game, but it, a non-conference game that would get my attention would be the third game of the year at Wake Forest. It is a road game at a Power 5 conference that's going to be up to play you. You're going to be walking into that in the top five in the country, and they are going to be completely geeked up to play. you. As far as a stadium atmosphere, think similar to what South Carolina was in 2009. Now, the team's not as good as South Carolina was as 2009, but the stadium's going to be that geeked. 
So those three games outside of the Georgia game, outside of the Oklahoma game, because I do think those will be two of the three major games of the season, the other one being the um, LSU Tigers, which I talked about this segment as well. But Wake Forest and Arkansas, two teams that are expected to win about six games in the course of the season. But that game, because of various reasons, has a chance to get really hairy. And Ole Miss needs to go in there and take care of business, especially at Wake Forest on the road. There, I just feel like there could be some like two lane 2023 vibes. That that's what I think about what could happen in that football game. But we'll see exactly how it goes as well. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Ole Miss has kind of gotten right with their uniforms in baseball. And they might have a normal strip weekend that we're all used to this weekend. I'll I'll tell you what I mean. I know that was probably confusing, but I'll tell you about what I mean in just a second. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your NBA players and teams with quick bets, same game parlays, and exclusive props. They have so much more. Yeah, I mean, just go check them out. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, it's an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day, and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. So, we talked yesterday about the cream uniform, which I really like those. The, the, those are those might be my favorite light-colored strip that Ole Miss has at the moment. Well, going around talking, and after Ole Miss beat Missouri State and they beat um, Little Rock in the midweek, which congratulations for doing that. They're, they're kind of playing home run derby a little bit now. But it seems like they might be ready to go for this weekend as in, They've got their uniforms from Nike. They got their shipment in. They all got cataloged. And this is what this weekend will likely look like. On Friday, you've got the cream jerseys. Cream jerseys. Saturday, navy blue. I thought red. I thought Ole Miss would go red then. But maybe navy blue jerseys on Saturday. And Sunday, the powders will be back out as well. We saw a thing online that a lot of this happened is it looks like Nike changed their model, if that makes sense, to where they changed the fonts on the numbers. So the numbers could look a little bit different. We'll see exactly how that goes. But yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty fired up about this look. Like I said, the navy blue I like. I Mike Bianco likes the navy blue. Do you want proof that Mike Bianco likes the navy blue? He what that was the only uniform they wore in Omaha. That that was the only one they pulled out. They just wear blue in Omaha. And that tells me he really, really likes those uniforms. And the powder blues are just the best in baseball, period. Um, college, major league, the whole nine yards, those uniforms look absolutely fantastic. I want to see what the cream looks like when they actually play in them. The picture looks amazing. But I want to see what it looks like. And I, like I said, I want that hat. I want that hat badly. Um, but this looks to be the strip, um, the three uniforms that Ole Miss are going to wear this weekend. Um, just from our herded on the grapevine type situation. So I would say expect those. Indeed. Now, Ole Miss baseball against Missouri State was able to win. Tracing Hughes kind of got going. That's good. He's the highest rated transfer that Ole Miss actually signed was Tracy Hughes. Um, but others have been performing at a higher level. Tracy, for whatever reason, hit a little bit of a slump 
in his first couple of games at Ole Miss. And if you're an everydayer and you've been listening to the podcast over the last couple of weeks, that Hawaii trip I was against, going west that far, messes with your body. And an athletic competition where your body has to be right, where if you feel wrong, you are going to struggle, that's a problem. And they went over there. The fatigue hit them like a ton of bricks at the end of that trip. They ended up coming back and hit the jet lag again and got basically beat by Arkansas State, which, by the way, just a thought, Arkansas State, I'm I'm kind of glad Arkansas State won that game because Ole Miss ended up, the year Ole Miss won the national title, if we remember, Ole Miss canceled a game at Jonesboro against Arkansas State. So it was kind of a good for them type situation. Ole Miss got the national championship. They win a ball game. That's fine because Ole Miss looks like they're starting to dig out of the hole that they have created for themselves. Now, Iowa, you can go over to the After Dark, the SEC After Dark YouTube channel and see um, Dids in the Dugout preview of the Iowa Hawkeyes um, with an Iowa writer, about an hour. Um, He also does his podcast on Ole Miss baseball. There's so much Ole Miss baseball overload over on that channel. Derek also, Mr. Baseball, comes in, and he's doing stuff with us as well. So he, he works really hard. He works really hard. So I hope that everybody is ready for what could be a interesting couple of weeks, months, and years in regards to college sports. I hope people are ready for the constantly changing landscape that is NIL and the transfer portal. Signing day, they could add an extra signing day to where signing day could be in June. There's a lot of stuff that we found out about this week from the national governing body That was interesting. Now, what does that mean for Ole Miss? All of this stuff that we break out, what does that mean for Ole Miss? Well, if you go back to the NCAA, uh, Ole Miss wants to be in the group that separates, period. They they want to be in that group. They want to sit at those tables. They want to, even if you have to be the Florida Marlins, you want to be in Major League Baseball as opposed to being in the Pacific Coast League, which is what the Big 12 is going to become. And all the way down to, you know, the Sun Belt is the Carolina League. If you want to look at leagues and in the hierarchy of exactly how this will look. So you want that. You want as many signing periods as they're willing to give because the high school signing period does not necessarily affect Ole Miss at the moment. Now, Ole Miss is going to recruit players, don't get me wrong, but they're going to spend a lot of time in December and in January working on the transfer portal. You you might see a situation where Ole Miss gets seven or eight players signed in June. Their signing class is half to three-quarters done, and they know exactly what they have to fill in in the transfer portal. This is this is interesting stuff to me. So everybody have a great weekend and thank you for making Locked On Ole Miss your first and listen every day as we have Keith Carter slated for Sunday and we wait on the most anticipated football season at Ole Miss maybe ever and you can hear about it all right here. But for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today is the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And for those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Anyway, howdy tidy everyone. Have a good weekend.